Razabani for IFO TV in association with MTK Global. With me, I've got the baddest in a good way, nutritionist in the business, Mr. Greg Marriott. Greg, um, is it too late to Hello, say happy, is it too late to say happy new year? I thought it was happy birthday, I'm sorry, it's not yet. It's not no to be listen. You could say you could say it in September and it'll still be relevant, Rose. Wait, where the think world's going. <laughs> uh, Greg, uh, haven't spoken to you this year, but firstly, as always, uh, how are you? How's the family? Well, miss, listen, all good, mate, all good. That's the main thing, isn't it? Everyone's uh, getting a bit uh, locked down fever. It's like Groundhog Day, you know, but listen, it is what it is. Uh, not, not, what can we do? What can we do? Flout the rules and get fined. The thing is in prison, brilliant. <laughs> Nah, it's, they're doing good. I mean, everyone's at the same boat, aren't they, Raz? Do you know what I mean? Some people go, some people have got paddles, some haven't. But we're all at the same boat. We all thought we kind of were heading towards positive light when anti Joshua fought Kubrat Pulev. We finally saw 1,000 spectators and fans in the building. Um, and we thought, brilliant, 2021 can only get better, it'll only increase. Yep. It looks like. We've gone backwards uh, and it looks like we're miles off from having fans back in any capacity. It's scary, Raz. I mean, when I saw, do you know what? When I saw them crowds, it were, it were uncanny. It were like, wow, better than show, better than fight itself, just seeing crowds. But uh, as soon as we went, and I knew as soon as I said you can have a, four days at Christmas, then we're going to, going to a lockdown, I just thought, here we go again, you know. But um, I, I can't see an end to it. Well, I can, but when? You know, it's, uh, I think New Zealand are back to normal. I think that's what they're trying to do now, just make it really, really that, you know, much. But I think people are, might might wake up and think, right, all right, I will stay in. That's my opinion on it. I just think it's a load of rubbish anyway. Not a load of rubbish. Can I say that? I don't, can I say that? You can get done for saying all these days. It's not a load, listen, it, it's, it's real. Listen, my dad phoned me yesterday and said, that, Greg, shall I have a jab? And I says, Dad, no, I don't. I wouldn't if I were you. Not yet. Not until there's a, a few more trials, because he's already had COVID. You know, he had COVID and he, and he, he lived. You know, he's seventy year old and you know he's he's had a full on OT. He's fine. He got COVID. And mom did. Everyone had COVID and he lived through it. You know, yeah, he were, he were in bed for a day and then he, he were a bit weak for a two week, but he were all right. So I says, you know, it don't stop you from getting it. I says, so why you have it, Dad? He was like, oh yeah, yeah, well. So you don't know what this jab does. You know, you're having it for what sake? You, you, you've survived that one. Yeah, but another mutant, mu, mu, uh, sorry, mutation in there. I thought it can go on forever. I said, Dad, you could get, you could die next week of t terminal cancer. Do you know what I mean? God forbid. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, I could, anyone could. I said, let's just, just, just chill out. Let's just, what will be, will be, Raz. You know what I mean? But it is crazy. But I do think everyone just needs to, if they want to get back to normal, do as they say, literally. But couple of months and then hopefully they can just get back to normal and I'm just feel sorry for the kids you know people want holidays it's the kids the education you know it's they're suffering they are suffering they're getting depressed the people who are are they getting depressed it's I feel sorry for them Raz because it is it is bad and people it's making people flout the rules because they're getting depressed I can't take it anymore you know and then mind's a sensitive, sensitive thing isn't it you know what I mean it's it's it, you got to create the, the balance in a minute. It's just tipping scales in wrong direction. So, but we're all conforming. I'm conforming. Whole family's conforming. So, and we're all safe. And that's the that's the main thing. You know, I hope everyone else is safe too and taking precautions. Yeah, absolutely. Let's hope this uh, this period can go as quick as possible so we can go back to mm -hmm. the, uh, normality. Greg, um, I've known you for many years now. Um, when you were looking after, we well, still look after Kel Brook, Kid Galahad, the Ingle Jim, Terry Flanningan. Um, even Tyson Fury at a time, Billy Joe, etc. You've obviously taken this post as MTK's nutritionist. So has your workload increased? I know we've spoken about it in our last interview, but has your workload significantly increased now? Well, no one's got fights for us. Everyone, you know, they did. I, I'm, a lot of people come on to me and said, oh, we've got this fight, that fight, and then fell through, they fell through. So it was just like kind of, um, I want to get a, a client, um, a client base, a big client base, and obviously then branch out, get other people working alongside me, nutritionists, and you know, to, you know, under me, and letting them go and see people, and, and building the kind of a a bit of a business out of it, being myself. But um, to be honest, 
no fights have really happened. So, you know, people, I say they don't want to diet through lockdown, but they don't need it because they've not, they've not got a date. You know, so um, I was expecting massive things, massive workload. And to be honest with you, uh, it just kind of, before it set off, it just, it just crashed. But I've not had time to, I've had time to reflect on things and work on a few things and uh, start sorting the website out and a book, different things like that for uh, people, for, for, you know, your regular Joes as well. You know, because that's, that's where a lot of people come, you know, your regular people who, who, who want to diet. Because, every, listen, everyone gets out of shape and they want to get back in shape. So, um, but as a, as a client-based thing, no, it's not increased massively, uh, which I thought it was going to, but that's obviously because of the current situation. But um, I, I, it's just like anything, Raz, as soon as it's coming back to life, everyone's going to be flooded. You know, tourist destinations, everything, fights, everyone's going to get on a card, everyone's going to be flooded. If I've got a fight in three weeks and I'm three stone overweight, oh, you know. <laughs> so when it takes off, it's going to be, I think it's going to be, it's going to be big. But I'm ready for it, you know. Yeah. Listen, I welcome work. I love it. You know, I love to be rushed off my feet. It gives me something to do and it, it gives me a bit of focus. So I love to help people as well. So, Are you still working with Samuel Vargas? I know you worked with him previously, but obviously he's come to the UK for quite a bit. So are you still with him? Am I? Would you want me to be? It's your decision. <laughs> no, listen, Sam's a good old friend. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, he's heading towards, he's, he's, I think he's gone to Las Vegas and he comes to the UK. And just little things like he said to me, we're going to head to, uh, to the UK a week before a fight and then do that there. And I'm like, stop. You need to come here th two or three weeks before, Sam. And it's just it's a little, a big thing, but it's a, like minor details, that just things like that. If you didn't tell me, it's like, no, you need to be a three the first time difference. So, yeah, I am working with him. And uh, so, but, but, when I work with people, I've got nothing against the opponent. Cause, listen, all, everyone's trying to earn a living and obviously get to where they need, get to where they need to be. But I've got to be on some someone's side. And obviously... Um, Sam Burgess has been a long time, long term friend, and to be honest, he's gonna be there for twelve rounds. I promise you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get Sam out of that ring. I promise you now. He's got that kind of, well, it's Colombian, but uh, it's that Mexican Colombian, just stand in front of you and just, you know, and, and he can bang, he can bang. He's wobbled a few people in in, uh, in his time. Big, big, big names. We're not expecting it. So listen, anything can happen. You know, you, obviously, I think Ben's favourite, but could be it could be an upset. Um, Greg, the, I know there isn't an official announcement just yet, but everyone has alluded that obviously Canelo fights in a couple of weeks against his mandatory in Yildirim, and then Billy Joe is next. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you, I know you can't confirm that to me, but from Eddie Hearn's interview, he has said that. Listen, we've got a two-fight deal, and, and the aim is come through Yildirim, and then Billy Joe is next. I know you guys have flown out to your, is it Future Ventura? Um, yeah. You're back out in camp. But with the fight still being a good 12 weeks away, is this what you would normally do with Billy? Take him away for 12, 13 weeks in camp? Or is this because this is potentially his biggest fight of his career and you want to spend as much time as possible? Yeah, I mean, um, I phoned him. <laughs> I was phoning him after five after Christmas. How are you? How are you? Phoning me, talk, talking, 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 looking at him. Take your top off, let me look at you. you know? <laughs> and it got to a point where the phone were not, not getting answered. Or it was getting answered. So I just phoned you back. Three days had passed. So I thought it's time, time, to, time to have a look at him. And uh, went down to have a look at him. And I just thought, mm, you know, you're getting a bit out of shape. And I said, before it gets to the point where it's going to be hard work, you know, we need to do something about it. So he agreed, you know. Um, obviously, with everything looming, still, you, you've got to be ready. And as I said to him, it's going to come and you're not going to have the time if you don't get on it now. So, yeah, we just decided to uh, start camp. And um, it's, I, I'll be honest with you, it's probably, it's probably where he is now, was probably five weeks away from Murray. Do you know what I mean? So we, we've we've capitalised on on the back end of Murray fight, you know, in being in shape. Uh, still a long way. So listen, the thing about this camp is not peaking too soon. I'll I'll, I'll be honest. You know that that is kind of the, the thing now. You know, um, with him not overdoing it, not overworking him, overreaching him, overtraining him, even. But now, um, Mark's listen. Every faith in Mark. Listen, he's a, he's an old school classic trainer. You know. And uh, I think he's a, he's a top man. It's like it's like a little family. It all works now together. 
<clears throat> but um, Billy's definitely focused. But again, you know, how many times they signed this deal and said you'll fight and it's not happened and it's just like it's, it's, it never happens until you, until they actually that, that bell goes and it's round one. You know what I mean, Baz? So we'll, we'll see. But fingers crossed because it, it's the fight that everybody wants to see. You know, it is, uh, and just the, the things that I see, I think you can do this. You can do it. You know, you really can do it. I keep watching Floyd Mayweather against uh, against Canelo. You know, and I'm not a boxing expert at all by no means, and I don't watch it because I try and break it down. You know, that's Ben Davison's job. You know, not mine. Uh, but no, on a whole, you just watch Floyd Mayweather and you think, just wow. Just wow! How do you even do that? It's like magic, you know. It's just magic. So, but but he's got something obviously, you know, very very similar to that, you know, when when it when he comes when he turns up. So um, it's just making Billy peak and turn up on that night, and I think you're gonna I think you're gonna see something special. Well, you're definitely gonna see him see something special. Put it that way. But I think if he outworks Canelo, frustrates him, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a hard night for Canelo. You say if the best Billy Joe will be will be shown or you want him to peak at the right time. Mm -hmm. Billy's always been very negative towards his performances over the last couple of years. Uh, yeah. His standout performances are obviously David Lemieux and then obviously yeah. Andy Lee when he won the world title. So yeah. he's got very few performances where he performed amazing, where he's yeah. got a lot of below par performances, which he was about, which is quite negative about himself. So does he, does he, is Billy Joe, does he need big names to get the best out of him? Is he that type of fighter where if it doesn't get him out of bed, He's just not going to perform. He used to be scared. He used to have the fear factor in him. And no disrespect, listen, again, Martin Murray, I only go on what I, you know, I don't really watch any of the people's fights unless they're my fighter. Even the guy who's fighting, I only watch Canelo because he's the big name. You know, um, I don't, if someone says, oh, this fighter, he's in his WBC, I'm like, I don't even know who he is. Some people I don't even know, Raz, you know, but obviously, year about Martin Murray with 38 and you know last chance of the one very very good season fight a veteran in the game but again Billy just said look I could you know probably be beating one and behind his back that's how confident he is so it's not overlooking anybody but I think to bring the best out in Billy he does need them names listen he knew David Lemieux could punch everybody knows one punch knockout merchant listen if that hits you you, you, you know you're going to know about it you know what I mean it could be like that so that in the back of his mind, is that's why he's sharp as hell, you know. But I think when he gets in with there, someone who he knows he can be like again in LA, could have stood there on that and took thrown punches at each other, and it just looked bad. So he knows himself. He don't come out and he don't come out and say, yeah, well, it was this, it was that. He just said that was it was rubbish. But then again, it's all because he's had twelve week camps and he's he's massively overweight and he's just thinking, I can get him now, and beat him. So yeah, he do, he does. If you don't see, if I don't see the best Billy Joe in this camp at all, switch on, I'll be like, well, that's your time come and gone. So only only time will tell. But just see little things now, like wow, you know. And, he, and I, listen, he said to me the other night, he says, "Greg, I swear to God, he says if I could make a deal, he says and win, he says and drop dead ten seconds after, right, I, I say thank you to me, goodbye to my family, I would. That's how bad I want to win. And that's not no joke. He said that like we." A meaning art. It's like wow, when someone says that, the will to win in him is so strong, you know. And um, to be honest with you, I've never worked with a boxer who has that that will that that much. You know what I mean? And it's nice. It's nice to have that, but it's almost it's scary too. You know, it's scary because you're like wow. So listen, I do honestly think, you know, it's not just going to be an art job fight. You know, it's going to be it's going to be massive, massive. But I just hope it just just to come off. Obviously, no injuries. Obviously, you've spoken about getting the best Billy Joe out there, but on the reverse, you have to look at what's in the other side of the corner. And we're talking about one of the greatest of our times. People thought Callum Smith had a, had a great chance with his height, his weight, his jab, his reach, but Canelo just nullified him and made him look very average in the most respectful way yeah. to, to Callum. So, is it one thing getting Billy in the best mental and physical shape, but then another thing is you're fighting one of the greatest fighters of our time. Who is at his peak? Well, that's it, isn't it? I mean, I try and talk to people who, who do know about, about 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 boxing. You know, if, if you were my fighter, and I would take you into 
your corner, bro. So I'd probably get you knocked out in 30 seconds, bless you. Do you know what I mean? Because I ain't got a clue. <laughs> you know, so I ask people who, who I've got no knowledge in, in, in sport and in game. So I do think, what do you think? And, you know, they're all saying the same thing. If there's one person that can do it, it's Billy Joe. Listen, it's not going to be an easy night by no means, but watching, just watch, just watching Canelo, like when Mark sits down, I'll, I'll just sit down with him and watch. And like, it's almost like what Mayweather used to do to people. How are you even not getting caught? How are you rolling that? How are you, do you know what I mean? How are you make it look so easy? You've got, you know, got a mark on your face. It's like, what? You know, and then Canelo, how he cuts ring down. You know, I cut off how he just dunks you down. It's like, do not get that breathing space. It's just like, unless you're in there, like Kel said, with Golovkin, it's just like, wow. It's just like, he's just there constantly in front of you. You know what I mean? Because he's so big, it's hard to, it's hard to, take him off, but I can't speak on him. I've never been in the boxing ring, you know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, listen, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's a massive ask. I'm not starting here saying, oh, yeah, definitely. I'll put your money on Billy Jokes. He's 100% going to do it. You know, I, I do think he can do it, but it's going to be, a, he needs to get everything bang right. Everything bang right, you know? But we'll see. Well, um, so I've heard Billy's going to be flying out towards the end of the month to go and see Canelo's fight against the Old Ring. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing you'll break camp for a couple of days and then he'll come back to Spain? Yeah, probably break camp. Listen, I'll, I'll probably have to go in, won't I? You know, hold his hand, one of them into it. You know? and, and honestly, it's, it's true. Uh, I think he's grown up where obviously he's had everything done for him, but um, you know, that, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I would like that, but then I'll become obviously, I'll become a, an house man at some point. <laughs> But no, listen, he, uh, it, I'd want to go anyway, you know, by his side. And I, I, need to, I need to keep an eye. It's the biggest fight of his life. Even if it wasn't, I'd, I'd, I'd still be at his side, you know, watching him feed him, just making sure. Because, listen, his mind's going to be another thing when he's there. It's my job to say, look, have this, eat this, take your bits and all that, you know. Um, Greg, just moving away from Billy Canelo, um, another fighter that you worked with for a short while um, in Tyson Fury. You... Yeah. You were the man that got him down from what twenty-eight stone to eighteen stone, ten stone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you managed to lose off Tyson. Um, looks like it's happening. It looks like the biggest fight in British boxing, uh, the undisputed fight yep. with Anthony Joshua, is taking place. Uh, what, yep. do you, what do you make of it? Uh, listen, it's be, listen. It should be. It's been on cards for years, hasn't it? You know, it's been on cards for ages. I just think to myself, it's so. Again, it's one of them. Can you ever see it happening? Because it's like, wow, that is the fight, you know? It's it's, it's Canelo versus, you know, Billy in, in, in the heavyweight division. So it's, uh, I just honestly think that <sighs> Tyson does a worse job, an easier job than he does to Wilder. And that, listen, I ain't got nothing against it, AJ, whatsoever, but you're asking me opinion, and it's not just because um, I've worked with Tyson. I've never worked with AJ, but it's just, what. listen, I've been around him and I've done, he's a freak of nature. What he do, what he could do at 20, 26 stone in that ring, we're just like insane. Just to nimble on his feet and ducking and diving and all these different things, you know. It was just, it's just, I've never seen it before. It's not, he's not, he, he defies the law of physics in boxing for his for everything, you know. He's, he's, he's a freak in a good way, you know. He's a freak. He'll tell you himself, but um, massive, and uh, I just think probably. What game plan does AJ go with? Does he do an Andy Ruiz? Can't do that because AJ, AJ will put him on back foot and hurt him. Does he take it to Joshua? Uh, does he take it to Fury? I think that's the only thing he can do. Fight. He has to come in and actually make it that with his. For he has to use his power. Otherwise, listen, he's going to get. He's going to get probably for me KO'd. But then again, it's heavyweight. So anything can happen. But I do think he bamboozles him. I really do. We saw a different side of Tyson Fury in his last fight against uh, Deontay Wilder, where he took the wow. second ring and he bullied Deontay. And we haven't normally wow. seen that from Tyson. Normally Tyson's on the back foot, feints a lot, yeah. jabs a lot, orthodox yeah. stuff for. So to those two contradicting styles, do they have their own weight categories? I.e., does he have to weigh a certain amount if he wants to twinkle toes on his feet? No. If he wants to come forward. Is there, is there like a maximum or a minimum he has to weigh? No, because, I mean, when I was taking weight off him, 
at first with Ben Davidson. You know, listen, Ben Davidson did an amazing job with him. You know, he, he did what I'm doing for Billy now. You know, and Kel is there with him constantly. Do you know what I mean? Because Tyson needed that. He did need that, you know, someone with him constantly. And Ben did an amazing job. Um, and then obviously I worked alongside Ben and, you know, we all worked together and get his weight off. And he was just losing weight, 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 weight. So people were like, oh, he's come back, but he doesn't look the best. Well, you're not going to when you just took four stone off and got it ring. You know, and another four stone off because you're all about looking good but performing. So the the last fight he had before I had a massive operation when I couldn't work for him no more because obviously, you know, when I said you know just you know I couldn't go to America because my operation. You know, again, he was still wanting to lose weight. I said, look, trust me, you just get down to about eighteen and a half, and then then you can start building back up. So. For me, no. It, it now, no matter what you, no matter if you want to stay at twenty stone, it could still, it could still twinkle so around ring because he did it at twenty six stone. It's just in him, you know what I mean? He's just his engine's just insane. But um, maybe it felt better at nineteen, eighteen and a half. You know, maybe he did feel a bit, a bit more nimble. But um, you know, he said he, he looked, he looked good. He looked big. He looked very, very broad. Obviously, it must have been obviously a bit more doing weights I don't know for that other camp uh, against when he took it to him but but just wow I weren't expecting that I watched the fight I just thought that's the wrong game plan if you do that but and that's what I'm saying he's just he is the man he's the king into your boxing you know he is <laughs> no absolutely well we look forward to that announcement hopefully the fans can be uh, satisfied with the undisputed clash when it takes place um, Greg just finally just want to touch on um, still staying with the heavyweight division We've had a lot of kind of back and forth this week with and last week with Deontay Wilder and his one of his trainers in in Mark Breland. Yeah. Now, is it quite sour? I know you've worked with many different trainers and coaches, but is it sour when you when fighters have worked with a trainer for a long period of time that it comes to a conclusion at end like this where they both are just slagging each other off? It's sad, Raz. It's sad because I mean, it should never happen. This should never happen. I mean, listen. I don't know much about his trainer. I don't much about Deontay Wilder. You know, you read things, but it's sad because they both made each other money. You know, and it's and it's you, they become family, guys. They become family. You know, everything what uh, what, what we've been through, even working down like um, from Ingle Jim to Kel to everyone else, and and they become everyone becomes family. And when it starts getting like that, I mean, I don't even know what's going on. I want to know what's going on, but. Is it sad? It's sad. I mean, everyone's saying Wilder's lost plot and blah, blah. Is it because he lost, he got defeated? I have no idea. You know, uh, it might be, he might have got a bit of mental depression. You don't know, you know, but he's he's gone from there. I'm not saying he's gone to there because he's still a great fighter, but um, I don't know if he can accept the loss or or, or what. I have no idea, but yeah, I, just, I just wish him well. You know, I really do because obviously, he's, he, you know, he's got, a, he's got a beautiful family and that and, um, I just think he just can. I think he just needs to just chill out and obviously, you know, just just let us see everything sweep under the carpet. Going back and forth and bringing things into it, and unless I understand his trainer, obviously, probably when he come out and said you've bite me drink and all this, obviously you're gonna get it's gonna get his back up. And if he's if he has if he's been like a father figure to him, let's say if he has, he's gonna get a uh, you know. So you, you you do fire shots back, but um, I've just learned in life, and this is whatever people are gonna say. They're going to say, aren't they, Raz? And the best thing is probably just to just take it on chin and just to let's leave it. But I do feel sorry for him, to be fair, because um, listen, he did put he did put two good fights up, you know. And uh, it's just it's just sad that it's gone that way now, you know. It's sad. I hope he can I hope he can get himself back on track, and we can see him again. You know what I mean? At his best, because it's exciting. No, it is exciting. Uh, Greg, I'm going to the last question, but this is the actual last one. Um, Go on. You said to me that. Kel Brook Crawford, you know, Kel did the weight amazingly well. Now, obviously, yeah. he was up against a pound for pound great in, in Terence Crawford. Yeah. I want to focus on that fight. But what's Kel got left in him? Uh, I know Amir Khan's talked about potential fighting Kel Brook, but they, they say that every year to tease us. But is, is Kel coming towards that end now? Is, it, is he coming towards the end of the finish line? So is the question, has Kel got anything left or is he coming to the end? Or is it just a bit, a bit of both? A bit of both. Personally, Kel's a very good friend. Very, very good friend. 
you know, not just a, a business, but not just as a business, you know, working partner, very, very close friend. And um, I don't want to see him at Ring ever again. If he came to me and said, I want another last throw at dice, I'd probably not just say yes. Looking at it now, I'll probably say, Kel, that's it. That's it. You know, after the fight, obviously, I was at, I was on a higher low, uh, you know. Yeah, he's probably got one more, you know, it's this, it's that. But actually, now no, no, it's all settled down. I don't, I, no, I think that's it for Kel, bless him. You know, he's... Um, and it's sad because he underachieved, you know. I've always told him he underachieved. I remember he sat he sat on his Argo in his house and he said, when he won Sean Porter and he went, I've done it, I've become world champion. That's what I wanted to do. And I just thought, is that the point where... You know, that's it, you know, kind of thing. And then from there, you know, listen, some great nights. Golovkin, you know, saying, come on, you can't knock me down. It was great. Daryl spends the eye thing. And I just think, it's, it, it's again, it's another sad end, you know, because we had a really good relationship. But personally, nah, I don't want to see him at Ring ever again. And I would, and if he said, please work with me, I'd probably advise him. I said, I, I can't do it. Just don't want to see him at Ring again. Do you know what I mean? I think I, I, people saying his punch resistance gone, his eyes ah, rubbish now. Listen, when you when you're saying someone's amazing, the deep Porter, you know, you, you can't just then say a couple of years that lad are rubbish. He's not rubbish, you know. He's he's getting older and he's coming to end his career. And yeah, I think he has come to the end of it. So you know, be grateful for good nights that he did give, you know, and have just a bit of compassion for you know end of his career. It comes to everybody, um, apart from Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right greg um lastly just uh wish you all the best with camp i uh, hope you all yep, thanks, work hard get to the end in in great tip-top shape um and stay well we and healthy uh, and um, without doubt we'll be catching up with you in in due course i've snapped my peck promise you snap my peck and bicep it's snapped it needs it needs my achilles tendon taking off and putting it in my chest Oof, sounds yeah, bad. Can you remember? Can you remember on Instagram when I put all the bruise up on my arm? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I went back home and did it again. It's gone. It's completely, it's completely gone. Yeah, I'm get, still just get Billy to rub some oil on it during the night before bed. <laughs> I don't think it's quite going to work, but we're soldiers. We've got to carry on, Raz. Absolutely. <laughs> Greg Marriott, IFL TV. Thank you very much. God bless. Take care, mate.